Welcome. Welcome to our first ever ACIS fundraising webinar. Um, tonight we are joined by Project Travel, a crowdfunding organization on a, mission, on a mission to get more students traveling by helping them fund their trip through peer and crowdfunding. Um, tonight we're going to learn all about how it works and how it empowers students to make their trips happen by sharing their story of why they want to travel with their family and their friends. Um, as you know, ACIS is also on a mission. We want to make your lives as group leaders easier. Um, and how will crowdfunding do that? Well, we're going to find out tonight. So I just want to give you a little hint and let you know that it is going to be way easier than selling candy bars. Um, and what's wonderful is that there's really no investment up front, um, except for maybe the investment of the time and energy of the students um, themselves. So just to begin, I am Liz Reese. I am the Director of Academic Travel Advisor Network for ACIS. Um, I'm going to be the moderator tonight. Um, and so I will be um, working here with Samantha, who is from Project Travel. Samantha Martin is the co-founder. And I'm going to let Samantha say um, a few words about herself. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Thanks so much for joining us. And also thanks to Liz and the rest of the organizers here at ACIS for hosting us. Uh, my background is in international education as a study abroad advisor, international scholarship advisor, and program manager. And the founder of Project Travel, Jennifer Thomas, is also on this call tonight. And she and I met while traveling and are passionate about getting more students on a plane or a bus. And one of the ways that we are doing that is through our online fundraising tool, which we'll tell you more about today. Hooray! We also have a few ACIS staff online tonight um, to help with any ACIS questions. We, um, just to run through how tonight will work, we will run through the presentation. Um, Samantha, I'm going to pass the reins over to Samantha in one minute. And we'll have a few polls throughout the presentation that you can partake in. And you can ask questions throughout the presentation through your, um, just by typing them into the screen there. Um, and we also will answer questions uh, at the end. So we'll take any significant questions and that sort of apply to everyone, and we'll answer those for everyone at the end. But we will, throughout the presentation, be answering all your questions, and everyone's qu questions will be answered tonight. So I'm going to pass it over to Samantha, and we're going to get started. Um, and enjoy. Great. So today we're going to be talking about what crowdfunding is, what makes it successful, why it works, why it doesn't, and show you what's possible for your students and possibly even yourself if you choose to get involved as um, a leader of the project. So let's start with what is crowdfunding. Most people have probably heard of several of the websites out there that are main ones like Kickstarter or Indiegogo, GoFundMe. And what Project Travel does is similar in terms of providing a way for people to raise money for um, a project which could involve uh, a business, an event, a cause. In our case, we explicitly support educational travel projects. So that's the main difference between us and what we will, we're going to call a general site like an, an Indiegogo, for example. But really the crowdfund is Yes, certainly it's about raising money, but also it's about telling a personal story, about self-advocacy, and it's really empowering for students to learn digital literacy and storytelling skills. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. Let's look a little bit at the difference between traditional versus online fundraising. First, it's important to note up front that no matter where you're doing fundraising, it's important to be dedicated to the process. In-person outreach is always valuable, even if you are taking an online approach. And certainly, thanking supporters and bringing them into the process is really key. Several key differences are, of course, online is more convenient. The entire transaction typically takes two minutes. Um, there's no upfront cost. Uh, Traditionally, in the high school space, you typically think of selling pizzas or candy bars, and you have to buy them, and there's a logistics element to this. Online is student signs up, creates a project, tells their story, and they're ready to go in, in minutes. Um, 
I should note, and I'll tell a little bit about Project Travel in a moment, that we actually verify projects before they are open for funding because we feel it's important that the student raise money for an educational travel program only after they have what we call skin in the game, which would signify submitting an application. Right. So with ACS, that would mean that they have submitted an application with a registration fee um, to ACIS, and they're a viable right. group. Absolutely. Another thing I'll note is, again, traditional fundraising, there's an upfront personal cost. In a crowdfunding model, the, it's absolutely free always for the person raising money. However, there is a supporter side fee that is taken from a, a portion of the gift given. So um, we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go along with this question. So because Project Travel is offering an online funding tool, I'll just share a little bit about that. And certainly, we can answer more general questions um, unrelated to Project Travel as well. But again, our mission, we're getting more students on a plane or a bus. We work exclusively with youth travel organizations. And as I mentioned before, we verify projects before opening them for funding. And we also provide uh, direct project advising, kind of coaching the students through the process so that our youth travel organization um, and also teachers don't have to assume the burden of now also learning how to do this and then also advising students on one more thing. Last but not least, we are officially over the $40,000 mark raised for educational travel. And we've been around since May 2013, um, launched last year with our public site. That's great. Thanks. <laughs> We're pretty excited. And we are working with ACIS. We work currently with over 60 youth travel organizations, about two new join us every week. But we're really excited to work with ACIS as a pilot project participant. And this is what their landing page looks like. And this is actually where uh, your students going with ACIS will sign up and start their funding project online. And this is live now. This is live now. Exactly. Absolutely. Great. So there are, there are a couple different approaches, uh, individual project versus group. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But here is an example of a real student raising money through project travel. A couple things to note. It's simple. You'll note that the call to action is right there in the center of the page. That's on purpose. Um, we want supporters to know exactly what to do when they come here and how to get this student one step closer to their program. I want to draw your attention to the 15% on the top left there, percent funded. And at Project Travel, we actually have implemented what's called a tipping point, which means that the student needs to raise 15% of his or her total funding goal before credit cards are charged. The reason for this is that it creates incentives for, for a supporter to come and be the first one. And in this particular student's case, um, you can see she's already reached her tipping point. So once they hit that 15%, every dollar raised after that is immediately available to them to start paying for their plane ticket, the program-related expenses. Um, a lot of people wonder, where is the money? Where is it going? Um, through the sign-up process, the student creates a WePay account. WePay is a payment processor, uh, an alternative to PayPal, secure, vetted, um, and as soon as the student reaches their tipping point, they can log into their WePay and transfer into their bank account and then pay their program provider. Very similar to how they might be collecting checks, which they would then have to put in their bank account only. This is all facilitated online in a very convenient way. One other example, uh, this is Dennis. He was our first successful project starter over a year ago. We've had many since him, but we like to feature him. And you'll note, of course, he reached his full goal. It was also wanted to give you an example that some students are asking for $500, which is our minimum. The girl we saw before was asking for $4,000. And really, it's about what is that student's personal funding gap, and how can Project Travel come in and meet their personal funding gap, even if it's only $500, which many people are raising money for the plane ticket or to offset um, food costs while they're there, or spending money, spending money so on and so forth. Um, you'll note that there's no Give button in the middle of Dennis's page, and that's because he's completed his project and it is no longer open. Um, also, you'll note at the bottom all of his supporters are um, listed there, and he can always come back and see who it was who has supported him along the way. I'm going to shift into 
more the mechanics of the benefits of online fundraising for students. First of all, obviously they're solving a funding problem. This is really personal to me because I was first generation college student. Um, and so for me, when I was thinking about traveling, um, I was financially independent and scholarships were the only thing that made it possible for me. This didn't exist when I was in high school. Um, but actually, I did fundraise my first travel abroad when I was in high school. And so um, it creates a proactive solution rather than students waiting just to hear whether their parents are going to be able to front the money or whether their summer job will be able to pay for it next year. Um, yeah, I think it's very empowering. I love that you sort of really put it on the student and it, it, it makes them, I'm sure, really appreciate the experience more too. Absolutely. They learn, <laughs> to, our, to our next point, they learn new skills. Exactly. Absolutely. And online fundraising, to be successful, you, the student needs to learn how to, these skills listed here, how to think about what their personal funding gap is and budget. Um, they need to learn how to self-advocate and market themselves and why this is an important experience and why somebody should be interested in care. Like what are what are they personally going to get out of it and how are they going to how is it going to contribute to their future career or perhaps what they might study in college or um, what types of skills will they learn while on this program. And we coach them through how to think about those questions um, and then communicate that to their community. Last but not least is that these students are actually creating awareness for your programs. They're creating awareness about young people traveling and global opportunities. A lot of people in the community may not even know that these opportunities exist because they might not have when they were in high school themselves. So it's creating a, a, a community around international global learning opportunities which I think those of us who work in this space, it's is particularly valuable to us yeah, to recognize we, that. So we talk a lot at ACIS about how teachers need to think about their trips as a travel program at their school and creating a sense of community, getting the PTA on board, mm -hmm. making parents aware, um, and, and really creating something more than just one trip. You know, that this is something I do at my school and it's a legacy of travel at our school, that we are a school that travels every other year or every year. Um, and this is just one other way to really get the word out and create that community outreach. Yeah, and it's great for communities uh, to be able to share, hey, this is what our young people are doing in the world. Yes, yeah. So what makes it successful? There are certainly do's and don'ts of crowdfunding. And I won't go as far as to say that it's a science, but what I will say is there are studied methodologies that make it successful, and those are all what we've experienced at Project Travel in real life. Um, the studies and the research, our, our own experiences support what we've been reading in the crowdfunding psychology. And here's your first hint. It absolutely does not look like this. There's a myth that online fundraising is simply you post on your Facebook page, hey, I'm going on this program, I give to my project. And first of all, if this were actually what the student would do, people would just simply like the post. There's no call to action. Nobody would be directed back to their project, and therefore, they're not actually achieving their goals. So we're very clear with them up front. This is about more than just posting an update on your Facebook page. You really need to commit to being actively involved for the entire duration of your project. We're going to take our first poll. The question is, what do you think is the most single, most important factor in a successful crowdfunding project? Is it video and photos in the project, the amount of the funding goal, cause of need, or high positive sentiment? Mm -hmm. Hmm. Okay, so we'll give you maybe another moment and move on to the next slide. Oh, well, actually, let me see what, no, actually, we'll, we'll wait till the polls come in. Yeah, we get the results. Okay. So everybody thought it was, most people thought it was cause of need. Cause of need, and it looks like pretty high there on high positive sentiment as well. Is that presented there? Oh, yeah, that one's yeah. actually the high. Okay, high positive sentiment. Sorry, that's yellow. Okay. <laughs> so. 
So actually, this is a bit of a trick question because all of them are actually statistically correlated to more successful projects. However, the single most important factor is actually the amount of the funding goal. Mm. And um, the reason that is is because if it's too high, the supporter feels that their contribution doesn't actually mean anything because they don't actually believe that the student will be able to reach their goal. Mm. We would consider too high um, anything for an individual above really $3,500. Um, $3,500 is an ambitious goal, but it's certainly attainable. Um, for a group, that's a different question, right? If it's too low, then they think, well, why? certainly you can just work an extra hour or two, you know, over the weekend. So that it, it needs to be the right amount so that the supporters understand that this is actually going to impact something concrete in their experience and that my gift matters, but not, not so high at some people. Interesting. So um, in terms of average success rates of projects, um, these numbers are reflecting the studies that have been um, done over 350,000 crowdfunding projects on different project um, platforms and project travel, um, but over a number of years. And typically, 68% are funded, and 32% are fully funded. Oh. At Project Travel, we found in less than one year of data that um, of those who are verified, about 50% go on to actually raise money. Um, and then we're, we're still gathering our data on what percent complete, you know, mm -hmm. full, but it's looking to be around 50% um, funded, and then um, most of those are at least reached their tipping point, and then some go on to actually reach more than their 100%. Wow. That's encouraging for the first year. It is. It is, absolutely. We're, we're delighted. Um, I won't go through this chart, but it's just to show you there are actually eight specific indicators that are linked to success. Image, which again goes, that actually refers more to the students, how they present themselves as an individual, whether they seem um, capable, whether they, their product is complete rather than missing pieces. Cause of need is important. And again, this goes down to self-advocacy about um, why is this experience important and how might they also give back to the community through this experience. Um, I'll just let people read the rest of those there, but it goes down to both supporter motivations as well as student input. Mm -hmm. Okay. So actually we're going to talk a little bit more about the ones that matter to the students. We already talked about realistic funding goal. Um, Photos and video are important. Um, we do recommend students do video, although often they will share it on their preferred social network like Facebook, and then we always, always tell them you must include a very clear call to action with your project link back to your project so that people can come and simply give. Um, engagement with supporters. The higher the engagement, the more regular the engagement, the more active the project, the higher the success. This engagement can mean anything from um, directly in their project in the updates tab to thanking supporters personally to posting updates on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. Um, it's just remaining active uh, throughout the process. And by the way, most students are terrified of being perceived as begging, so they only want to put something out there one time, and we say that's the absolute worst. Mm. Um, you need to you need to be reminding people because even if I care about what your project is, I might have just been busy the day that I first heard about it. So I would love for you to be back in touch with me because now I don't have to manage it. You're helping me remember. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that's pretty normal. Um, so a, a question we just had was who who is making the donation? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, who are students reaching out mm -hmm. to? Great question. So. With Project Travel, the idea is that they're reaching out to their direct community. That's, we think of it as one to three degrees of separation. So certainly friends and family are included in that, but it's then who do they personally share it with? It's also members of um, the business community. It can also be uh, an association or a religious organization that the student is involved with. What we discourage in terms of the the, the conceptualization of it is that 
we, we don't tell students, hey, strangers are going to be coming on here and just finding your project. We really emphasize that it's the student is in control of who they share it with and that it's being pushed out to their, their direct community or that two to three degrees of separation in their community. Okay, great question. Cool. Okay, so let's talk about supporters and what they want. Supporters are, um, of course, if they know the student, that's obvious why they might consider giving. But supporters also want positive labeling, which can be as simple as being, being thanked for being generous or being indicated throughout the process that your gift, so a project travel, when they click the give button, it says your gift pushes so and so a little bit closer to and whatever country they're going to. So they can feel that their gift is actually creating some, they have some agency and they really like that positive label. Again, mentioned high engagement. Decisional control refers to a suggested amount. So at Project Travel, in the give process, we have an example, which is $100. The average gift we see is about $60, but it just gives a, a sense of what they might consider giving to the student as a meaningful gift. We see gifts come in at $5 or $10, $25, $30, sometimes $300, but we're sitting right around that $50, $60 on average. And of course, sorry, sorry to interrupt you, but do you see um, people doing this, you know, before Christmas or a birthday mm -hmm. and asking at a like specific time? That's such a great question, and we call that alternative gifting. Mm. Okay. Ask for things or ask for experiences, not things. And we did a whole campaign over Christmas on the holiday season around this, mm -hmm. um, and we certainly use that as one of the tools to use. Um, as a way to engage with the community. Instead of a birthday present or a dinner out, right. why not ask to support your educational travel experience? Cool. And so what is so what would be like the average that a student might raise? On our site, um, we see that most students are asking for about fifteen hundred, uh, fifteen hundred to two thousand. And okay. the way typically plane tickets, if you want to think of it that mm -hmm. way. They're really asking to offset their airfare. Okay. Okay. Um, Teachers. Teachers do play a role, and this can vary, of course. Um, really, it's about presenting online fundraising or crowdfunding as a viable resource for students. Knowing the basics about what makes it a success is helpful, um, but certainly, again, at Project Travel, our philosophy is that it's our job to help the student be successful in reaching their funding goal, and really, we work with organizations and teachers to get the word out there that it's, it's an option. Understanding the process as a learning opportunity and not just simply um, just to get money. This is something that we tell students they can and should put on their resume if it's something that they, they did um, with any amount of success. So they can say, imagine how powerful it would be for a high school student to say, I raised $2,000 with 25 supporters over a period of 30 days to go on my educational travel experience, which, by the way, I went here and this is what I learned. Yeah. Right? That's we're, powerful. So we're often talking um, about how students can use the ACIS travel experience as their college essay, but just that just popped into my mind that what a great, I mean, colleges are looking for kids who have initiative and are globally minded, and this really would be an excellent topic for a college essay. I mean, mm -hmm. I think, you know, when we talk about teachers, um, when we talk to our teachers, sorry, about fundraising, um, some of them are hesitant because of the work involved. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, having a car wash, let's say, um, and 10 mm -hmm. students show up, you know, the money they make is then divided by the mm -hmm. students, and some students did more, made the posters, and some students um, wash the cars and who did more work mm -hmm. and finding that balance and this is such an excellent opportunity for teachers to be involved in a way that is empowering their students mm -hmm. um, and still giving them a great way to raise money and a great opportunity to raise money for their, Absolutely. their kids. That's why we're excited about it. Sorry, can you tell me excited? All right, keep excellent. going. Well, not to put the kibosh on the excitement here, but um, we're actually about to talk about concerns. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> A lot of things, but um, crowdfunding it, again. It is absolutely a solution, and it's very new in the world. It's been around just a couple of years, but of course, it's not a magic bullet. And we're going to take our second poll about 
what is your biggest concern about crowdfunding? I don't, want to see this. I don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, yeah. Okay, is it your, your biggest concern or your biggest concern perhaps for your students is failure to reach the goal, legal issues, program cancellation, or this is so new, I'm concerned, I don't know what to be concerned about. Ooh. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll, get, we'll give you a minute, and then we'll post the results. Okay, we'll give you one more moment, and we'll close the poll in five, four, <laughs> three. Okay. Waiting for the results. Okay. Um, wow, a lot of concerns spread across. It looks like legal issues are the top here, um, closely followed by I don't know what to be concerned about, um, and failure to reach the goal is high up there. Interesting. I would have guessed program cancellation. Guess what? We'll talk about all of them in in brief um, with this next one. So. Concerns. One is simply supporter, what we call supporter fatigue. There's a lot of causes out there. There are a lot of there's a lot of noise in terms of people being asked to participate or do something. Click on this, give to that. Why should they care about this? So that's one concern. Is my credit card information secure? What about legal issues, which was the top one in this poll? What happens if they cancel the program? And are these funds really going towards a program-related expense? And let's mm. let's tackle each one of those. Yeah, you can go ahead. <clears throat> so what we've seen is that in terms of supporter fatigue, this really goes back to empowering the students to feel confident enough to put their, their story out there. Um, and really, imagine why you as an individual would give to somebody else. You may or may not choose to support a student going on educational travel. Well, I would imagine this prob probably would. But if imagine that your niece came to you and said, hey, rather than Rather than my birthday present, this, this is an important experience, touching on what we talked about before. And really, um, supporters, even if they don't give financially, they are more than delighted to hear what this person who they know is doing in the world. Um, and sometimes if they don't have the finances, they'll also share it with their friends. Um, but again, it's the supporters realize, hey, maybe I didn't travel, and I really wanted to, and this is important, and I can make this happen. You're, um, moving on to the question about is credit card information secure, it absolutely is. Payment process, processors like PayPal and WePay, who we use, um, have gone through all of the hoops to get you know, federally, you know, applying through the federal regulations and, and being compliant. Um, the information is secure. It, they are regularly updated and absolutely putting credit card information on our site. We don't store it at Project Travel. We don't. Unless we need to handle an issue, we directly contact our payment processor and advocate on behalf of our students, but information is secure. In terms of legal issues, um, this is typically around in tandem with program cancellation. What happens if they raise money and they don't go? Well, first of all, on um, the monies given are legally considered a gift. So there's no possible way that a school or a youth travel organization can be legally responsible for money that isn't returned. However, what I will say is we've never seen this happen um, because on our site, again, if the student needs to be, uh, we verify that the student's going on the program so that they're serious. It's not possible for someone to raise money for an ACIS program without them actually having started the process in ACIS knowing about it. Two, if they don't reach their tipping point, no credit cards are charged. Um, three, if they do reach their tipping point and they cancel, their Give button is taken off their page. Um, we instruct them on how they can return the funds through WePay in a very simple, straightforward process. And um, again, we've never had it happen. Yeah, so that's <laughs> never going to happen. And even if it does, we'll deal with it. But it's, again, they return the money and simply update their supporters that they're, they couldn't go for one reason or another, and, and that's it. Yeah, that sounds easy enough. Yeah, or they defer. Right. They defer and simply say, hey, I can't go this summer for the following reasons, but we take the Give button off. I'm going to use it for this program next year hmm. with this teacher. Great. All right, so 
students actually have concerns, and in fact, um, I would say students students are, <clears throat> it takes a tremendous amount of courage to be able to tell all of your family and friends that not only are you traveling, but that you are also raising money for it. So their biggest concern is what if, what if my family and friends think I'm begging, it's really hard to ask for money. Two, do they have time? Students are more concerned about failing than I think teachers or even we realize. Um, they ask about why there are fees. Well, actually, we've never had that question, but I get that more from other people, not students themselves. <laughs> um, and then how do I do this? So let's address each one of those questions. What we tell students is, look, if this is important to you, there's a way to make this happen. You no longer just have to wait to see if your parents have enough money for you to go on this program. And we are going to help you get there. And it is possible. Um, when I tell students, listen, if your friend came to you and said, hey, this thing is really important to me. Can I tell you about it? Would you, would you be bored or not want to listen to them? And they're like, well, no. I say, well, why would you think that? about sharing your story with your community. I think, uh, just to interject here, I can see why the students are probably so excited you know, for themselves, for this experience, that they don't really think of it as a cause, mm -hmm. right? And they mm -hmm. don't think of themselves as a cause. But you know, it is. And I think people really, I, I don't know, I just feel like if one of my nieces wanted to do a trip, instead of me buying her nail polish or something, you know what I mean, for her birthday, actually being able to give to an experience would be amazing. You know? And Absolutely. I think so many people will, will do that. And I think telling the students that and encouraging them in that way um, will, will take away those fears. Totally. And then to be able to watch them progress through that and actually have the experience is really yeah. rewarding for everybody. So they do realize that the people who care about them will care about what they're doing and want to support. Um, it is a learning experience, so the fear of failure is they look. Um, first of all, what you put in is what you get out. But secondly, okay, maybe you do reach 100% of your goal. That's our goal is to get you there. But what if you raise 75% of your goal? Guess what? You, that's a total success. And you've learned a lot, and you have money that you can put towards that experience. Um, and we've had students come back time and time and time again and say how much they, they've learned, even um, without anticipating those, those different things. Um, again, in terms of the classes, the student, <coughs> students pay nothing out of pocket. They don't have to give these gifts back. Um, and the fees that are retained are standard for crowdfunding platforms. And actually, a portion of those go straight back into student scholarships and um, uh, incentives for them. Last, again, we are helping them every step of the way. A couple of quotes from our project starters. Um, I'll just let you read those briefly, and then we'll keep moving on. Okay, and last, I just want to touch on group funding. It is possible. Um, if you're going to approach group funding, it is different than individual funding in that it needs to be equitable participation for equitable distribution. And it's highly recommended that it be tied to a specific goal of the group and not just individuals. So for example, um, the group project will go towards offsetting all of airfare for every student, or this project is going to support a particular excursion. Um, and what that would look like is simply um, in, in a scenario where a group wants to fund together, we also recommend incentivizing or encouraging participation over first, over dollars, because um, some students may be part of a community that may not have as many financial resources, but still want to participate and may give five dollars, but they're getting involved and we want to we want to incentivize participation over that and everybody will benefit financially as well. In the case of raising with Project Travel as a group, we actually require that it be connected to an administrator or a teacher so that we, we are guaranteed that the students will have equitable distribution. Yeah. So just some thoughts I had about, you know, if I were a teacher and we were going forward with the group funding possibility, you know, some starting points might be raising your tipping money or, you know, raising money just for an extra excursion for the group. So um, I don't know, there's, there's different approaches you could take, but as a start, it might be good to choose something that the group will do together 
um, that would be fun that you could sort of reach out to people about. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And we come to our last poll. And before we go, oh, sorry, Oops. I just know. Go ahead. Yeah, you can. You can. Okay. Um, this actually is just. Uh, this is not a real project. It's just an example oh, cool. of what what it might look like if it were a group. Um, you could have a logo. It's obviously you want to indicate to the potential supporters that it's a class. The project goal is obviously much higher. It wouldn't make sense to have a group project for a thousand dollars. And of course, it's the story of the group, not just an individual. So probably the things you would want to highlight in a group project would be more curriculum, excursions, um, if the students have a special project related to that um, experience that, you know, maybe they're giving a presentation when they come back, you would want to highlight all of those things in this particular setting. Okay, um, last poll before we go to questions. Which do you think will be more effective in your school? Individual crowdfunding, group funding, a combination, or I'm not sure if actually crowdfunding will be effective in my school. Okay, we'll give you one more moment before we close the poll and see the results. Okay. So most people think individual. Individual, excellent. With some in, interest in a fair amount for combination. Cool. Okay, excellent. So um, we're now going to move into the question and answer um, time, and we have a couple of questions yeah, I have funneling a couple. up. Yeah. So the first question is, how do the students get their money? Yeah. So you I mentioned we pay. Yep. Yeah, but how do they actually get their hands on the yeah, cash? Yeah. Great question. And actually, we can. Um, so during the sign-up process, uh, students connect their project to their WePay account. So if you want to think of it this way, um, their project is the front part, which allows their supporters to give, and then the WePay is the back part that um, is connected directly to their project. So again, after their tipping point, they have immediate access to that that money, and they can directly transfer it from their WePay account into their bank account to pay for their program expenses. Okay, so one another question is, how is this best presented to the students? That's a great question. Um, this honestly will vary depending on what who you're what types of students you're working with. Um, so for example, if you're talking to a group of theater students, I might actually encourage them to use those skills around their project and why not? why not put on a play and, and then have, you know, phones ready and people can come, whatever. Um, in general, I would say that we have seen a large number of success in just personal referrals, like in an advising session or a group session where a teacher is perhaps talking about their upcoming program. 100% mm -hmm. of the time, finances are always either a question or a concern in that type of a setting, and that's the perfect moment to say, or even proactively say, and by the way, if you're concerned about funding, there is this option that you can look at, um, and these people will help you. And um, yeah. maybe the so for us, we the teachers usually have a recruitment meeting on mm -hmm. um, that first meeting where you know usually there's parents and students and maybe faculty um, in attendance. So I think maybe that would be the time to propose that there is mm -hmm. opportunities for fundraising. Um, Maybe it, you can decide if it's going to be individual or group or both. Um, and then that first student meeting, um, you could say, you know, we're going to talk about it at the first meeting. Or if you want to meet privately, maybe set up just a fundraising meeting mm -hmm. um, at that point. That's a really good question, though. Yeah, and, and certainly in whatever online spaces, it's certainly helpful to include a link to the ACIS page, for example, or whatever crowdfunding platform you might be using. Um, so that, obviously, if, if that is where parents and students are going, that they can access it um, online easily. Another question we had was, is there a fee for WePay, like PayPal has a fee? Yeah, that's a great question, and there is. So the total fees coming out from the supporter side is 5.5% with project travel and 2.9% plus 30 cents on the transaction. So nobody can keep those numbers in their head, so what it means is, on a $100 gift, 
um, Project Travel retains five dollars and fifty cents, and We Pay retains three dollars and twenty cents. The student retains close to ninety-two. So another question was: um, Is seventy-five percent realistically what most students raise? Uh, that's a great question, and again, we are still. Um, we're less than a year in with data, so I'm always a bit hesitant to say this is what it is. But again, 49% um, of those who are verified get funding and reach their tipping point. I would say probably close to about 25% go far beyond that and okay. continue to raise, you know, yeah. and I, of their tipping point. You know, I just I think that where ACIS is just sort of partnering with you and we're learning. Um, about how this tool will work for us as an organization and for our students and teachers and our groups in particular, we'll have much more data moving forward um, probably by next year this time mm -hmm. to see how successful these students are. Um, but again, what I think Samantha really is trying to get at is that what the students put into this um, really affects how much money they raise um, and the outcomes. So. Um, Hopefully, ACIS will continue to support you as group leaders. We'll be providing you more information in ways that, as a group leader, you can support the students. And Project Travel really provides that one-on-one -on -one, um, project advisor. Mm -hmm. right? Is mm -hmm. that what it's called? Yeah. So there's project advising, which is one-on-one. -on -one. The students can, we've done everything from email, phone calls, Skype, Google Hangout, um, to interact with them. But also the system itself gives them training through the sign-up process, and there are specific triggers along the way that give them specific educational material. So for example, how to use social media to reach your goal, or how to create a call to action, um, or 35 ways to engage your community in online fundraising. Um, and our blog has all of those resources always available. We interview project starters and share their stories and what what worked for them with us, um, and then we highlight that within um, those who might be thinking about it but haven't made a decision yet. So and I would imagine that we will be doing that exact same thing. So right. we will take people who successfully crowdfund with Project Travel and ACIS, we'll highlight them on our blog, we'll share their best tips, and we'll start to have um, a support system for you as well. So another question that just came through is, um, does this only work with ACIS travel? Um, no, it doesn't. We certainly we work best when we work in relationship with the organizations who are working with the teachers sending their students, or we also work in the higher education space as well. But um, certainly, Project Travel, we are we work with over sixty at this point youth travel organizations. And right now, I should note that our homepage is in an invite-only mode because Project Travel is expanding our fundraising site. And so only those who work in direct relationship with us have access to the funding tool. And we can make that available to new organizations, but um, we're focusing on strengthening the current relationships that we have and making sure that what we build next is going to be done right. Excellent. There was a question about um, students coming from lower income yes. communities that yes. I definitely want to address. Yes. Um, so I have worked with low-income students in the past in, within higher education and actually had a former student of mine come back um, to private travel and decide she wanted to raise money for a study abroad program. And this was her exact question is, look, um, <laughs> my family doesn't have money, so I, I don't know if this is for me. And I said, you know, that's a personal choice, and I hear what you're saying. But think of it this way. Your family, even if your direct family can't support you financially, they want to many times they want to support the student and hear their story. And I said, mm -hmm. you know what? When you share your project with them, supporting you may look like giving funds, but supporting you also means just sharing your story with people that they know and saying, hey, I'm so proud of my daughter. She's doing this. For that student, I say, look, you also need to think about how to leverage your wider community. Again, we talk about that one to three degrees of separation. And we help them understand who that might be, local businesses, organizations, um, even in their friend group, and a lot of smaller donations actually really add up. And in this particular student's case, she went for it, and she reached her tipping point, and she did a volunteer program in Jamaica. So um, it's not an easy answer, but I think that it's a misconception to say that students from low-income communities can't involve their community or that their community doesn't want to be involved. Cool. Yeah. I can see this being a huge asset for people in 
mm -hmm. low income areas. Um, I should I should also note that Project Travel, part of our next steps, is to identify how to bring new resources into um, our community. So, for example, we are um, launching our first sponsorship, and I won't announce it publicly because it's still going through legal. But what it will involve is that we can actually incentivize students say, hey, if you reach your tipping point, there could be some kind of matching grant notion so that actually their money grows from their efforts plus the efforts that, of the community that we are cultivating within Project Travel. Um, and that might look like dollars. It might also look like discounts for their travel experience or other things that um, are great perks for them to help them um, stay motivated and excited about what they've accomplished throughout the project. Wow, that's really cool. That's exciting. Yeah, we're, we're excited to, to try new things and bring new people in. All right, I think we are um, at the end here. I think we've covered a ton. Um, I just want to thank Samantha um, and Jennifer, who has been answering questions out there. Um, we are so excited at ACIS about this partnership. I think um, where we are such like-minded organizations sort of on a mission to bring more students overseas um, and to really build that global community um, that you hear so much about. You know, students right now are um, so expected to be globally minded. Um, and, you know, their future is that global market. Um, and they, you know, they have such an opportunity through ACIS and Project Travel to get overseas and sort of broaden their horizons and have those aha moments where they realize, you know, that there's more going on out there than what's in their backyard. Um, and that they can be a part of it and that they can change things. And um, this, to me, is so empowering for students. And I hope that as teachers, you see the power um, that you can give them and, and the opportunity for them more beyond you know, that you're giving them this wonderful experience, but really giving them the chance to make it their own. Um, and I, I hope that you partake in this opportunity and share it with your students. Um, and, and work with us to let us know how we can support you um, in more ways and, and through things like Project Travel. And when, if and when you are someone using Project Travel, they want your feedback too. I mean, mm -hmm. they really do. They want to know how to make this platform um, as successful as possible for, for students and for your groups traveling. So thank you so much for joining us tonight. And um, we really look forward to see how this pans out. I mean, next year we could be doing a webinar on the successes of Project Travel and ACIS crowdfunding. So